When the NES launched in 1985, the games on the system were just steps above what the Atari could provide, often consisting of simple arcade ports or one-dimensional gameplay. I mean, hey, these games could literally fit on cardboard. I think that shows how simple they were. There was Super Mario Bros., and while having one of the most revolutionary games of all time on your console is pretty neat, it was obvious that there was room for bigger, even more ambitious projects designed to push the limits of the home entertainment box. It wouldn't be long before another game came out that would become iconic to the name Nintendo. Obviously, I'm talking about The Legend of Zelda. But before that, there was Castlevania. Now, I am a huge Castlevania fan, and my enjoyment of the series all started with the very first game. This is the original car share I've had since childhood, meaning yes, I am legally biased. However, I'd still like to talk about what I think makes this game so special compared to other Castlevania games, and even other games of the time. Now, if you've never played a Castlevania game, first of all, I want you to know that we aren't friends. Secondly, you should know that pretty much all the games are based around the same simple idea. You're a member of the Belmont family, and you're off to kill this guy named Dracula and murder all the ghosts and demons in your path. It sounds like one big horror cliche that you'd see in an old black and white movie, but that's really the point. The whole series is one big love letter to the horror genre. In fact, the director of the first game, Hitoshi Akamatsu, went on record stating that he wanted players to feel like they were in a classic horror movie, which only became more evident as future games became more cinematic. But it all started off as a game where you play as the now-famous video game icon, Simon Belmondo. You know, from Super Smash Bros. On a surface level, the gameplay is as simple as jump and whip. Simon moves like a real human, he can't jump high and he moves slow. There's absolutely no momentum and no athletics in the movement, but instead of the game having a focus on platforming, most of the emphasis is on how you handle the enemies that come at you, including but not limited to, Medusa heads that fly in a pattern, panthers that attack you when you get near, fish people that jump out of the water, ravens that attack sporadically, and bats that kind of just do whatever. You also have an inventory of secondary weapons to help you defeat enemies, however you can only carry one at a time. There's the watch that lets you freeze enemies for a short period of time, the dagger which is a straightforward projectile, the axe that goes on a large arc making it useful for taking out enemies before you have to confront them, the cross which functions as a boomerang hitting on its way there and back, and the holy water which breaks the game. It kills weaker enemies in one hit, stuns stronger ones allowing you to whip them to death, and lasts way too long. And that would all be pretty good on its own, but it also locks the bosses in place allowing you to just kind of win. I don't really mind though, because the bosses in this game are probably the one thing Simon feels ill-equipped to handle. They simply throw too much at you in such a small area that you can't really avoid much. These secondary weapons take ammunition to use anyway. What is the ammunition? Oh, just hearts. You know, like in real life. They're found in candles and dropped by enemies, along with your whip upgrades and weapons. But you can also break certain blocks to find hidden items such as a pork chop which replenishes your health, and the numbers 2 and 3 which can also be found in candles and enemies. I had no idea what the numbers 2 and 3 did until I recently got the manual, and it turns out they allow you to throw multiple of the same weapon at the same time. I guess you can learn things from manuals. Thank god games still come with them. Now the sprite work in this game is something I adore, but it's a little hard to put into words why. Later games in the NES library had graphics that I'd describe as crisp. Developers had so much experience with the console at that point that they could apply ample detail to each and every sprite, while keeping everything distinguishable. On the other hand, early NES games are what I would describe as 5 minutes in Microsoft Paint. Backgrounds were often a singular color, and the sprites, while acceptable, were a little jagged and could even be misinterpreted. Like I'll never forget when I found out that Mario didn't have a badly distorted head. Castlevania acts as a weird in-between. The developers certainly had a vision of how they wanted the game to look, and despite the limited experience with the console, they ran ahead and did it anyway. What's created is a game where all the sprites are overdosed with detail and the backgrounds are wildly varied, with the keywords there being overdosed, varied, detail, and... They really tried to stuff it all in there. The sprites can sometimes be hard to interpret. Like somehow I thought this was a pig, this was a monkey, and I'm gonna be honest, I still have no idea what this thing is. However, I feel like this doesn't detract from the game at all, given that the game is about horror. In an odd way, it adds to the gothic nature of the game and gives it a bit more charm to the experience. The backgrounds, on the other hand, are really something else. While it uses many different patterns to make up the background, it almost never repeats. It's always something to look at, like a painting that you remember long after you stop looking at it. Oh, and of course I have to mention the music. 
It's an NES game that got a vinyl, what more has to be said? Ironically though, despite the fact that the series has become known for its music, the composer of the first game, Kinuyo Yamashita, has never worked on another Castlevania game after the first. However, she did compose the music for Buffy the Vampire Slayer on GBA, so she never swayed too far from her roots. Now Castlevania only consists of six stages, and while that may sound short, each stage is a very distinct feel, both in terms of aesthetic and the challenges they offer. Additionally, the difficulty of the game can make completing it very lengthy for an inexperienced player. This game is infamously known as one of the hardest games on the NES, but it's for all the right reasons. Given that Simon moves slowly, there's none of that Mega Man-itis where you see an obstacle and then die because you just couldn't react. There's none of that. I don't want to say it's fair, but it's a lot less cheap than other hard NES games. You'll always see your next obstacle seep onto the screen, and most of the time you'll have multiple options on how to handle it. It's about knowing your toolkit and understanding how to use it. It leaves the difficulty in the game feeling mostly genuine. Aside from some bosses, which again, if you have it in your inventory, just apply holy water. Simon's very limited moveset, walking, jumping, whipping, are all very committal, leaving you open to attack or severely punish for mistake. Whipping is not instant and can only be done in two directions, and while you can whip in the air, once you jump you lose complete control until you finally landed. It overall feels very stiff, and I know many people see the stiff movement as a flaw with this game, but I don't believe that's the case at all. Because every obstacle in the game can be handled with what you are given, all you need is an understanding of risk versus reward. Yeah, sure, you could say that the stiff movement makes the game harder than it needs to be, but having played Castlevania 4 and just blasting through it on my very first playthrough, that only made me that much more sure that the stiffness of the original adds more than it takes away, and that the developers likely felt this way too. Especially given the fact that future Castlevania titles after 4 brought back two-directional whipping, or at least made sure there were some limitations. But the way the game handles your limited moveset in conjunction with your obstacles leaves the game feeling incredibly well designed and gives you genuine satisfaction over getting past what the game throws at you. While every level introduces new enemy types, enemies are reintroduced in ways that give a whole new type of challenge and test your skills that you've honed thus far, with the best example probably being the Medusa Heads. They're originally introduced in level 2 in a straight hallway with them acting as the sole obstacle. Then, since you have learned their pattern, it immediately combines them with bottomless pits on the floor above the hallway. Then all the way in stage 5, they introduce these knights that throw axes, the difficult enemy on their own, but right before you face the boss it takes both the medusa heads and the axe guy and uses them to make one single excruciatingly difficult but well thought out obstacle course. Stuff like that makes the game have a very natural difficulty curve. Castlevania leaves the player feeling fulfilled by the whole experience with this genuinely challenging and fun gameplay, along with that unforgettable horror aesthetic that's with you all the way from the second you boot up the game and see that animated bat on the title screen. Now in recent times, the Castlevania series has probably undergone more changes than any other video game franchise, becoming a game that's home was on handhelds, that plays like Metroid, that uses RPG elements, and that has changed its art direction to resemble the five letter sin known as anime. There were also some console games. The Metroid style games are fun, don't get me wrong, they are incredible games, but they just aren't why I fell in love with the series. And the classic style is, well, classic. It still feels timeless and unique to this day. And the first one just nails what makes these games so enjoyable. So much of this game has become a staple to the Castlevania franchise, along with becoming so iconic to the name Nintendo that it's a flagship game on the NES Classic. And there's a reason why. It's not just for the sake of tradition. It's because they got so much right on their first try. So yeah, that's Castlevania. You should play it. I don't really have much else to say about... Uh... Wow, this basement is spooky. It's almost like this episode is Halloween themed. <laughs>